So there you have it guys, the brand new Club Sport steering wheel F1 2020 limited edition wheel from Fnatic. So job done. Okay guys, so what we're gonna be doing today is taking you through this brand new wheel in a whole bunch of detail. So we're gonna be starting off with unboxing. We'll uh, rewind obviously and do all that. We'll show you exactly what you get in the package. Take you through all the uh, features of this brand new wheel. And we're gonna look at it from the perspective of both somebody who might be looking to purchase a formula wheel from Fnatic for the very first time, as well as somebody who might be interested in upgrading from say one of the previous limited edition wheels or maybe a formula V2 or something like that. So we'll go through all those details, answer some of your questions from the last couple of days as well and then we'll jump in the sim and take it for a spin as well to see how it performs now just before we kick off i do just want to quickly mention that we do have some affiliate links in the description now of course there's absolutely no obligation to use those links but if you would like to help support what we do here at boosted media then that goes a really long way to doing so and it doesn't cost you anything extra so i really do appreciate your support there but with that said Let's get going on this review. Okay, so we've got our F1 Esports official supplier logo on the front here. I'm sure a lot of other manufacturers are extremely envious of that at the moment. Uh, now there's one other thing that I wanna point out as well. You'll notice the distinct lack of any Xbox branding on the packaging. Now this is because this wheel is not Xbox One compatible. It is PS4 compatible if you have a PS4 compatible wheelbase. One of the important things about Fnatic to understand is that compatibility for PlayStation comes from the base. Compatibility for Xbox comes from the wheel so just make sure you take note of that so let's pop this guy open now you'll see here we've got the i am an artist quote on the front here from graham hill same as what we had on the uh, v2 formula wheel that i uh, unboxed and reviewed last year and you guys tore me to shreds in the comments because i wasn't familiar with the quote at the time so i'm not going to miss it this time so i am an artist the track is my canvas and the car is my brush so we've got our quick start guide here We've got a little pair of tweezers, and we'll have a look at all of these things in more detail in just a moment. I want to get straight to the main event, though. I don't want to dilly-dally around too much and annoy you guys. We've got a couple of sticker sheets here as well, and uh, these look to be really nice quality stickers. So let's have a look here. Very nice indeed. This is definitely a step up from what I've seen from Fnatic in the past. We've got some white stickers there as well. Excellent. Pretty much everything you could possibly want for there, but we'll go through all that in more detail in a moment as well and show you exactly what we have. We've got a little retention screw here as well for screwing into the wheelbase. So don't throw away your box without saving that first. We'll peel that off quickly now, put it somewhere a little bit safer, and then we have the wheel. So pop it out of the box here. Okay, here we go. Very nice. So let's start off with some of the basics here. 280 millimeter diameter. So the same diameter as the previous versions of Fnatic's formula wheels. Uh, and as, as I've commented in previous videos, it's a nice diameter. Feels really great for driving formula cars and GT3 cars as well. So no complaints whatsoever there. 1.2 kilograms as well. So it's a good hefty weight, but not too heavy. I think it's, it's a, it's, it, it sounds funny to say, but it's a really good weight for the wheel. Anything lighter and it would start to feel like a bit of a toy, anything heavier and it starts to become a little bit too heavy. Now in terms of buttons we've got our 11 push buttons so three on each side two in the middle and three at the bottom and those have these new removable button caps that we'll have a look in more detail a little bit later on those stickers that we saw just before will actually go on these so they're black by default when you get it and then you can customize them to have whatever stickers that you want on them and they've got that nice sort of plastic finish but we'll look at that in more detail a little later on now the push buttons themselves are the exact same buttons that have been used in previous Fnatic wheels so if you've had other formula wheels from Fnatic don't expect these to be an upgrade but look I've always been quite a fan of these buttons they've got a really nice tactile click to them they've got a nice little bit of amount of sponginess there as well so you can kind of feel when your fingers on the button before you actually commit to pressing it and they've got a really nice click to them as well I'll just give you a listen to that quickly now So yeah, it, it doesn't have that kind of hollowness to it. I know it sounds silly, but some wheels that I've used before, when you when you push on the buttons, you can kind of hear it reverberate throughout the chassis and it just feels kind of cheap and you need a little a little bit plasticky and toy-like and it really isn't an issue with these wheels. So you you know, you kind of just get that premium feel right throughout with the way, with the way all of these buttons feel. And it's the same for all of them. We'll talk about the other buttons in just a moment, but yeah, all the push buttons have a really nice feel to them. If we compare it quickly to my Asher Racing wheel, which 
costs about three times as much. We'll put that over here now. The overall feeling of the buttons is pretty much identical. The, the, the Asher Racing Wheel's got a little bit more resistance in the buttons maybe, but about the same amount of squishiness or sponginess before you commit to clicking. And if anything, it actually echoes a little bit more in the chassis, this one being an open sort of aluminium design than the or CNC machined aluminium design, I should say, as opposed to the plastic and carbon fiber chassis of this wheel. But I mean, not a massive difference between the two, but we've got both wheels here. We may as well compare them. So Asha Racing. And Fnatic. We've got our two toggle switches on either side, so up and down. We've got our little tuning menu button here, and we will take you through the tuning menu a little later on as well. We've got our funky switch here. So this is a rotary encoder, as well as a one, two, three, four directional switch, as well as a push button. So seven functions in total, left, right, that's two, three, four, five, six, and pushing down is seven. We've got the standard two axis analog joystick on this side as well. And I've always found this useful for looking around the car, say looking behind me while I'm driving or out to the side to see a mirror or something like that. Particularly if you don't have triple screens or VR or using a smaller screen, this is particularly useful and something that you don't get on all that many wheels. Then we've got three multi-position switches here. Now, importantly, the center one here is a mode switch to switch between different modes on the wheel itself. Again, we'll cover that in more detail later on. So the only ones which are actually functioning as inputs are these two. Now, importantly, these can be used as rotary encoders as well as fixed position switches. So what I mean by that is as a rotary encoder, each time you turn the switch, it sends a pulse to change in either direction. So it doesn't actually keep a record of what position the switch is in. But in multi-positional switch mode, what it does is as long as you're using a compatible game, it actually knows what position the switch is. So say, for example, you want to go from uh, engine map number six to engine map number 10, you could just go from six to 10. And then if you were to go out of the game and come back in again, it would actually know what position the switch is in and go back to the same one. Whereas with a rotary encoder, obviously it doesn't know where it was. So every time you turn it, you kind of have to start from scratch again. So that's an important distinction to make with these multi-position switches. And again, you can switch between the different modes depending on the sim that you're running and what exactly you're wanting to do with these switches. And then we have our two thumb rotary encoders, which are actually my favorite thing about my Formula V2. These are an absolute game changer for playing F1 2018 and 2019 in particular. I used them for ERS and uh, fuel maps. And yeah, it really made me a lot faster because I wasn't having to sort of change things and take my hands off the wheel while I was driving. Often I was changing fuel trim or ERS modes mid corner. And this really did make a massive difference. Now, one of the comments that I made about the Formula V2 when I reviewed that is that the uh, indentations on these thumb wheels were maybe a little bit light. It does click into each position as you turn it. So you can feel that sort of mechanical resistance or that haptic feedback as you rotate the wheels. So you know when you've clicked it into the next position. But I felt like on the V2, they were a little bit too soft and maybe a little bit too free spinning, not quite enough resistance there. Now it could well be just down to manufacturing tolerances because there's not a huge difference. But if I grab my Formula V2, it does feel a little bit easier to spin on both sides. Both sides are consistent with each other. And both sides on this one do feel a little bit stiffer. So I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to call it. I'm not going to say that they've definitely made a change, but at least on the wheel that I have here, these have got a really nice feel. And again, I'll comment on this once I get up and driving with my gloves on and tell you whether I feel a real difference uh, in, in a driving scenario. But just, just as a first impression here, they definitely, they feel consistent with each other, but they do feel like they've got a little bit more resistance than my V2 had, which is a good thing because that is one of the only complaints that I actually had with this wheel previously with the v2 so yeah as i said that could just be down to manufacturing tolerances because the difference is small but it definitely feels like there's something a little bit more there so just something of note there so then we have our oled display which can display a range of different telemetry data as well as our menu options and again we'll take you through that a little bit later on once we're up and running then we have our rgb leds along the top and the side so we've got our flag leds on the side those are now working with f1 2019 as well as some other titles and again i'll show you that in a moment too and then we've got our rgb rev counter light here as well and those are fully customizable through the Fanta Labs software but we'll take a look at that soon. Now on the front you'll also notice it's got this new carbon fiber pattern this is what's called forged carbon fiber so a little bit different from the woven carbon fiber that you'd be used to from the previous wheels. Now it's not fundamentally stronger or weaker or anything like that it's just a different approach to the design and I kind of thought when I saw some photos on the internet of this wheel previously that it might look a little bit cheap but I can tell you in person it really does have a very nice finish to it. I mean it's going to be a uh, you know a subjective thing whether you like it or not, but I actually personally really like it. It doesn't look cheap or toyish at all. It looks really classy to me and 
and uh, yeah, really happy with the design. Really nice screen printed F1 logo as well as a Fnatic logo. Then we've got the Fnatic logo on the top here as well. So let's flip it over now and have a look at these shifters. So without a doubt, the single biggest change on this wheel over previous Formula wheels from Fnatic is the addition of what they're calling the Club Sport Magnetic Paddle Module. Now this is essentially a cut down version of the Podium Advanced Paddle Module. And if we have a look at the two of them side by side, I've actually got the Podium Module attached to my Formula V2 wheel right now. So we can look at them side by side there. So you can see we've got the shifters, both sides exactly the same. And if you have a look at it, it's actually almost like a cutaway of the exact same piece, exactly the same hinge. And then we've got the additional paddles up the top here as well as the analog paddles. But this design with the neodymium magnets also gives us a really nice defined click when we change gears. So I'll show you quickly now. It sounds really nice too but it feels exactly the same as it does on the podium paddle module. Now, by comparison, let me just quickly show you the paddles that would normally come with the V2 and other Formula wheels from Fnatic quickly here. So this is one that I took off my Formula V2 wheel to replace with the paddle module. And you can see in there, there's a, just a standard toggle switch in there or a micro switch basically. And when you pull the paddle, you can hear sort of how chintzy that sounds by comparison, but all it is is just a spring mechanism inside there that you can see that little silver part there. It's hinging on the spring. And when it squishes down, it pushes the uh, pushes the little arm in on the toggle switch, and that's it. Now there are magnetic mods available for these, and I actually did test one of those out on the channel previously. And all this is is just a magnet basically that bolts on to the back of it. And for a twenty odd dollar modification, that really does give us very close to the same feel as we have here. Now there are other advantages as well. Obviously, this is just made out of cast aluminium, whereas the ones that are on the new wheel a beautiful anodized aluminium and they, they really do look very, very nice. I'm actually surprised they call them a club sport part because they are genuinely podium quality, but it is what it is. But yeah, they feel really, really nice there. So if we compare that now with the podium paddle module, there is one other pretty significant difference here that I just want to highlight. So one of my observations I'll say when I reviewed the podium paddle module specifically was I felt like the carbon fiber that they used for the paddles themselves is a little bit too thin and there's a little bit of flex there. Now, in fact, I've actually seen a few people have snapped these off right at the uh, at the point where they're bolted in there where it's quite thin. And yeah, I just I just feel like, you know, for, for a podium paddle module, for something that's supposed to be their top spec product, they really should have used thicker carbon fiber there. Now, if we measure that quickly for you, you can see about 1.92 millimeters thick there. Now, if we go to the new Club Sport paddles, already you can see much, much thicker, a whole millimeter thicker, so 2.9, so a third thicker. And what that means is when we pull on these ones, there's genuinely absolutely no flex there whatsoever. So, I mean, obviously if you if you really reefed on it, if you pulled it unrealistically hard, you could still snap it off. There's no question about that. But yeah, they're definitely a lot stronger and you're not gonna feel any flex when you're changing gears normally. Whereas with the podium paddle module, there is actually a little bit of discernible flex there if you kind of pull on them a little bit too hard. So and again, just a small subtle difference, but something that I definitely felt was worth highlighting because it's good to see that they are making those small improvements and taking feedback on board. Now, if you do want the additional functionality that the podium paddle module brings, then you can, of course, upgrade this wheel with the podium paddle module. And as I mentioned before, this new Club Sport magnetic paddle module will be available later in the year as an upgrade for your existing formula wheel. And I don't know exactly what wheels it will be compatible with, but I'll let you guys know as soon as more details come to light on that one. Now, the other key difference there, just to quickly highlight for you as well, is of course, the standard paddles that come with the, uh, with the V2 and other formula wheels have uh, aluminium paddles there. Whereas obviously the new wheel, as you saw, has the same forged carbon paddles. So just um, overall a much more premium looking product and it really blends in well with the rest of the wheel to give it that real sort of high quality feel that was maybe just lacking a little bit in the previous formula wheels from Fnatic. One other observation regarding these shifters, they actually bring the paddle quite a way further out than the shifters that came default with the, uh, with the formula V2. So if we have a look at the podium shifters by comparison, the distance is actually pretty much exactly the same. So we can quickly measure that for you now. We'll grab this one, two centimeters exactly from the edge of the wheel to the edge of the paddle. And if we do this side as well, exactly the same, two centimeters. So no difference there from the podium paddle module. And now compared to the stock shifter, you can see quite a big difference there in the uh, distance that that pokes out. So let's just quickly measure that as well. This is going to be quite a crude measurement. I apologize for that, but it's the best way I can kind of get in there and do it. So let's hold that up against there and 
roughly about 25 millimeters on the scale there. So yeah, it's bet between 20 and 25 millimeters difference there anyways. So whether or not that has an impact on the driving experience, I'll comment on that once we do our test drive, but just another observation for you guys. Now, one more thing to cover off, cause I know you guys will ask about it. The difference in the design here with the cutaway bottom. Now I've seen a few people comment that purchased previous versions of the limited edition wheels. that There was a little bit of twist or flex in the base of the wheel. Now. What I can tell you is, yes, there is a little bit. If I twist it there, I mean, you're probably not even gonna see that on camera, but if I twist it as hard as I can, there is a tiny little bit of flex there, probably maybe like a millimeter or two millimeters at most movement. Now, the, at least for me, the amount of flex that I have on my Formula V2 is actually exactly the same. So I don't feel any difference at all between the two wheels there. Now, that's not to say again that it's not gonna be different for other people. I can only review what I have here in front of me, but I can tell you with what I have in front of me right now, I can't tell any difference in the amount of flex in the handles on either wheel. So if you're sort of worried about going in this direction over a V2 because of that reason, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If there is any difference, it's so tiny that I really don't think it's gonna be a problem. And you know, when you're, when you're driving, you're not twisting it in that way anyway. So I really just don't see that being an issue. While we're on the subject of strength, you can see the multiple layers of carbon fiber here. Now, I don't know for a fact that every single layer that you can see there is indeed carbon fiber. It may be some sort of composite material. I have seen Fanatec uh, marketing for previous wheels saying that it's full carbon, but I can't confirm or deny that. Obviously, we do have a top layer of carbon fiber as well as a bottom layer. If you look in behind, you can see that it's uh, it's actually the normal uh, woven carbon fiber on the bottom there. Around the front, obviously, we have the uh, the forged carbon fiber. The carbon fiber structure that we see throughout the front panel here actually extends all the way throughout the handles as well. So it creates almost like a unibody sort of structure for the entire thing. And you can actually see in the base of the hand grips down the side here where the carbon fiber ends. Now, just on the subject of that as well, just so you guys know, exactly the same as the previous wheels. Uh, 4.9 or 5 millimeters thick. So there you go. Just on the subject of materials as well, this plastic that they've used around the hand grips as well as around the back is a rubberized plastic. Now, as a lot of you would be aware from other products that are rubberized plastic, it does have a tendency to wear over time. So if you have a look at my Formula V2 wheel here, you can see there's quite a bit of wear there where the uh, rubberized coating's actually rubbed off and it's gone right back to the bare plastic. Now, admittedly, that's probably got about 500 hours worth of usage on this wheel, and that is with gloves as well. Without gloves, I doubt it would be an issue. It would probably take a lot longer to wear out. But just in terms of wear and tear, if you are a heavy user of your wheel, you can expect it to wind up looking something like this around the areas of contact where your hands rub against the plastic over time. So let's have a look at the stickers that are included in a little bit more detail. So the button caps themselves actually pull off, so you can just pop them off like so. And you can see there's a little indentation there where the stickers go. So I'm not gonna put any on the wheel right now simply because I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna put where or exactly what my button assignments will be just yet. But yeah, you've got all the colors there, a huge selection of different stickers there, everything from communications, control, uh, you know, the PlayStation buttons even, seat adjustment. Yeah, I mean, everything that you could possibly want is there pretty much that I can think of at least. We've got black, we've got white, and then we also have a bunch of square ones as well that we can put in other places around the wheel. But I wanna try and keep it pretty for now. But what you do is pick it up with the tweezers, stick the color on first, then stick the uh, sticker on that you want as well. So peel that off, stick that over the top. And these are a nice plastic finish as well. So I don't see any issues with those wearing out over time. But once I've got it stuck on and everything and been using it for a while, I'll let you guys know if there are any issues with it. But I think that pretty much covers everything hardware wise. So let's get this installed on the sim now. I'll show you how the tuning menu works, how the LEDs work in Fanalab as well. And then we'll take it for a spin. So we're all up and running in the sim and I just want to quickly run you through the tuning menu on the wheel as well as the Fanalab software and the customization for the LEDs, vibration motors and so forth. Now I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail on either of these simply because we already have other videos that cover both. But uh, yeah, for people who are brand new to the ecosystem, I just wanted to quickly cover this off for you so you know exactly what you're getting with this ecosystem. So little button here on the left hand side of the OLED display, you press that and it brings up your tuning menu. Now this is basically an on wheel representation of the same settings that are available to adjust within the software itself, whether it's the drivers or the Fanalab software that you're running. So we use our seven way funky switch to navigate throughout the various menus. But the first important feature here is that if you toggle through with the rotary encoder, so if you turn it each way, you can actually switch between five different profiles. So say you have five different cars that you drive regularly, you can switch between five different profiles for wheel settings directly from the wheel itself without having to alt tab out of the game and go in and adjust any settings or anything like that. So each one of those five presets sets 
has a menu system that you can go through. So we've got sensitivity, force feedback, and if we toggle the funky switch again, you can see we have an adjustment there for the level for each one of those. So first up we have sensitivity. That is how much you turn the wheel relative to how much it turns in the game. So if we adjust it here, you'll actually see in the software, in the Fanalab software, the uh, the bar go up and down like that. So normally for F1 2019, I have this set to about 360. And then scrolling across, we have our force feedback setting, which is our maximum strength. We have our linearity setting. We have natural damper, natural friction, natural inertia, force feedback interpolation, force effect, game force effect strength, our spring strength, our damper strength, our ABS setting for the vibration motors, should we wish to have the wheel and pedals vibrate when we lock up. Shock vibration setting, that's again the amount that the vibration motors run. Our multi-position switch function, and then back to the main menu. So just quickly on the multi-position function, this is what I was talking about at the start of the video, where you can choose whether it operates as a rotary encoder or a multiple positional switch. The difference being that in MPS mode, it knows exactly what position it's in, and that's not compatible with all sims. So if we go through the menu here, you can see we have a constant pulse, so that constantly tells the game what position it's in. We've got a pulse, which is just a single pulse for each rotation. Encoder mode, which works exactly like a rotary encoder and then an automatic mode as well. So that is a top level overview of the tuning menu. We press the button again to exit out of it. And it'll also show you once we get driving the telemetry that's displayable on the screen as well. So let's jump into Fanalab now and I'll quickly show you what settings are available there too. So again, if you're after more information on how Fanalab works and how to configure everything in more detail, there's a video linked in the description below for you to check that out. But for now, we're just gonna look at the vibration motors and the LED function, which is what's relevant directly to the wheel. So vibration, there is some little vibration motors actually in the hand grips, same deal as with previous wheels from Fnatic. So what happens is under various different circumstances, you can have those vibration motors provide haptic feedback through the wheel to let you know what's going on with the car. And you can set up this through the vibration setting here in Fanalab. So you see we've got a couple that are greyed out. Those are ones that don't work with this particular sim that we've got selected being F1 2019. So we've got an engine setting here which simulates the engine vibration. A rev limiter as well. So that shakes when you reach the rev limiter as a sort of like a haptic feedback instead of a shift light. Uh, we've got suspension travel here, traction control as well. So that can kick in when traction control comes in. Wheel lock as well as wheel spin too. So these are all things that you can use to provide that little bit of extra feedback when you're driving to sort of let you know what's going on with the car in the absence of things like G-force, you know, the re and the real vibrations that you'd be feeling through the wheels of a real car. So then we move across to the LED tab and starting with the telemetry here, this is the information that will be displayed on the OLED display. So this is essentially a hierarchical system. So C stands for constant, meaning what is going to be displayed on the screen at all times. And then the numbers on the right are our priority settings. So in this particular usage case, we'd have our speed on the display at all times. And then when we change gear, we'll see that override the speed setting. So we'll actually see come up on the screen the gear that we're in. And then that'll disappear again after a second or so and go back to speed. As priority two, we've got ERS, meaning that when we change our ERS setting, we'll see that pop up on the screen as well. So we could change this around if we wanted to. Say we want to have RPM on the screen at all times instead of speed or gear on the screen at all times. That's all configurable from here. Then we move across to our RPM gauge or the lights across the top here. So we can set a percentage for each light to come on and at 100% we can set it to flash as well. So basically set it up to be exactly the same as it works in the real car. And then we can also click on each segment and select the color that we want from the wheel here as well. So that's pretty cool. And then the same here under data telemetry list as well. We've got a pit lane indicator as well as a pit limiter. So these will come on when we're under those conditions. And again, we can configure these to be whatever we want. So if we want, say, the entire bar to light up, we can do that, change colors and so forth. And then right over here on the right hand side, telemetry data list. So again, indicators that we can configure, we can change them to be whatever color and whatever segment we want. And we've got indicators for wheel spin, wheel lock, pit lane, pit limiter, anti-lock brakes, which is disabled for this particular sim, traction control, DRS allowed, DRS active, red flag, yellow flag, blue flag, green flag, and scrolling down, white flag as well. So all ways that we get that information in our face while we're driving without having to sort of take our eyes off the road. So that pretty much covers everything as a top level. Let's actually jump jump into the sim now and show you how it all works in the real world. So I've popped the button caps off just for now so you can see what the wheel looks like without those two. But let's just quickly run through exactly what I've got my button assignments set to for the most important things at least anyways. So I've got my DRS activation here, pit limiter here, so both nice and easy to reach just by moving your thumbs. I've got my fuel trim and my ERS mode here, my differential adjustment up and down, brake bias up and down, 
Then we've got our funky switch controlling the multifunctional display and then our look around button here. And that's pretty much it. I'm not using the rotary encoders here or the multi-position switches, I should say, for F1 2019. Everything I need is sort of accessible from where I am here. So pretty straightforward. All right, I think we're ready to head out on the track. So let's get going here. You can see at the moment we've got the lights on the top and the red light here to indicate that we're in pit lane. Obviously we're in pit lane, but there is an indicator there regardless. And as we head out of the pits, we should see that turn blue. Yep, there we go. So that's to tell us that our pit limiter is active. So we're in pit lane and our pit limiter is active. So when we come out of the pits, we'll be able to switch that off. So still active at the moment. I'll switch it off. There we go. And then the white light came on to indicate wheel spin. So you're going to see a lot of things going on on the wheel, but that's good. That gives us a good opportunity to sort of demonstrate it. So wheel spin again there. Bit of a slide. So that's telling us now that our DRS activation is available. Okay, just want to remind you to keep an eye on your and lock up as well. So I'm just sort of trying to run through everything here. So again, we'll do a wheel spin here. You can see the white light comes on as soon as we lose traction. So let's just do a burnout. Again, you can see white light comes on to tell us that we're uh, breaking traction. And then you can see as well, the yellow lights are coming on to tell us that the track is in a yellow flag state. So all sorts of things going on, but let's go for a proper drive now. We're on the hard tyres, so going to be a little slower than usual, but that's okay. It gives me an excuse for being slow. So, so far in terms of ergonomics and everything, look, I mean, honestly, it feels, I'm sure, as no surprise to anybody, it feels exactly the same to drive with as the uh, Formula V2 does. I do like the feel of the leather. The little indentations actually do feel quite nice with the bare hands. Now, I don't normally drive with bare hands, but I wanted to sort of start off like that just to sort of get a feel for it, because I know quite a few of you will. But yeah, really actually liking the feel of the leather. Actually, I think I prefer the feel of the leather to Alcantara for bare hands driving just feels a little bit more natural maybe and of course less likely to pick up dead skin cells and be disgusting so you can see there now when I activate my DRS flicks to the bottom I configured that before if I switch it off again you can see it goes to the other mode so with the lights in the top position that's telling us that DRS is available you'll see it come on again around this corner here so DRS available DRS active Now one other interesting thing, we commented earlier on the position of the shifters and how they sit a little bit further out with this wheel than they did on the Formula V2. Now, it's not uncomfortable by any means, but they you do definitely notice that they stick out a little bit further. My, my fingers are tending to sort of touch the back of the shifter plate a little bit. And I'll show you in my final thoughts exactly sort of how it was, how my hands were positioned when I was driving, because I know it's a bit hard to see now. but. Yeah, look, ideally for me and the size of my fingers, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but ideally for me, the shifters probably would be a little bit further in. Um, yeah, again, it's not, a, it's not a problem, but they are definitely sticking out a little bit further than I'm used to on the Formula V2, which is probably the only difference that I'm really feeling. I'm not feeling any sort of flex at all in the wheel, which is great. All right, so... We're going to try a hot lap now. It's by no means going to be a masterclass of F1 2019, I'm sure, but should give you a good idea of exactly how the functionality of the wheel works throughout the course of a normal lap. So we'll crank everything up here now. Go to overtake and rich fuel. DRS open. ERS open again, and then we'll crank our ERS down, bit of a lock up there, leave our ERS on medium, and then crank down our diff a bit too, Bottas is nice and slow for us. be able to overtake him through here. There we go. Alright, ERS back up to overtake again. And I'm going to move my 
brake bias forward a little bit. And this next bend, ERS open, or DRS rather. ERS back to high again. Brake bias back. Back to overtake mode. Alright, so just quickly pulled up here. Now I can tell you the rotary encoders feel really nice with the bare hands. I still maintain that they feel a little stiffer than uh, what I'm used to from my V2. And again, I'm, I'm not sure whether that's a manufacturing change or, and I've just been disqualified for standing still on the track. That's okay, we can restart the session. Um, I'm not sure whether they just feel stiffer because of manufacturing tolerances or whether they actually are. It'll be interesting to see how other people's uh, experience compares with the wheel. But for me, at least on this wheel, they definitely do feel that little bit stiffer. But let's put the gloves on now. Feels a bit more familiar with the gloves on. It's funny how it actually feels, it feels so much different. Okay, crank up everything again. DRS open. down to high. Whoa! Tank slapper! <laughs> Cold tires. take again so yeah the the indentations are a little stronger even with the gloves on which is a good thing I can definitely I can feel those notches I can feel those clicks better than I could with my v2 but again as I said before it's it's not enough for me to confidently say that it's a design change I um yeah I, I'm not gonna make that call but it definitely does feel better than my v2 does in that regard but Look, otherwise everything else feels absolutely identical as you would expect. There's not really a whole lot more to comment on in terms of the overall drivability. It's comfortable to use. The uh, the diameter feels really good as well, as you'd expect. Nice and natural. And uh, yeah, look, there's no problems with ergonomics in terms of you know things not reaching the way they should or I'm not finding that my hands are rubbing awkwardly in any position. And the leather actually feels really nice through the gloves as well. So yeah, overall, very very happy so let's jump into our final thoughts now okay so before i can summarize my thoughts on let's see if i can get this name right the club sport steering wheel f1 2020 special edition i think we really need to talk about pricing because this is what it's going to boil down to for a lot of people now originally it was going to sort of script this sort of final thoughts segment but i think it's better to just sort of talk openly and just discuss this and my thoughts you know kind of candidly as we go so i'm going to pull my cheat notes up here i am recording this before the official release of the product so i've got a bit of pricing information here so the pricing that they've given me 449.95 euros for this wheel or 749.90 if you're in australia so 749.90 australian dollars so it is ninety dollars more or ninety euro more expensive than the Formula V2, which, as you've seen in today's video, is extremely similar. Uh, now, obviously, that does come with the older style paddles that we uh, showed you before. But you can upgrade it to the podium paddle module, as you can see on mine, and that is uh, one hundred and seventy nine ninety five euros for the podium paddle module. So to purchase a V2 and a podium paddle module together, 549.90 euros, which is exactly 100 euros more expensive than this wheel. The only real advantage of doing that other than subjective cosmetic differences between the two is just the addition of the analog paddles as well as the additional paddles up the top. And look, to be honest with you guys, I've never really found I use those much in the real world anyway. So these magnetic shifters are actually quite a uh, selling point for me personally. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, these are gonna be available to purchase separately. I'm not sure yet exactly what pricing is gonna be on that. 
obviously I'll let you guys know when I find out. I'm also not 100% certain on exactly which wheels these paddles will be compatible with either. Because it is using those Hall Effect sensors, I believe it would only be the same wheels that are compatible with the Podium module, but that's just my own take on the situation. That's not an official word by any means, so don't take my word on it. Honestly, other than that, the only other differences, as we said, are just subjective cosmetic differences. Now, I personally really like the look of this wheel. I really like the forged carbon look. It's, it's always really difficult to photograph or video carbon fiber and really make it look pretty. It never looks as good on camera as it does in the real life. And I, I really do love this, the way it kind of glistens, the way the light sort of hits it in different angles and adjusts as you turn it around. It really is a very beautiful wheel to look at. I personally really like the orange as well. I think it looks a lot more classy than the previous year's models. But again, that's purely subjective. Other than that, the leather feels really nice in my hands as well. Using it with bare hands and with gloves is quite nice. Feels nice and slidey. And the little dimples in there, the little perforations actually do feel really nice. They don't really add anything in terms of grip. They say that it's for ventilation. I don't know whether it really makes a difference, but it certainly does feel nice. And I think it looks quite nice as well. And again, it's kind of difficult to capture exactly how nice that looks on camera, at least for me with my uh, subpar camera skills. But look, the only other thing to really mention as well is we talked a little bit before about how these paddles sit a little bit further out than the stock paddles do. And you can see here how my hands are kind of resting as I use them. Now, if you've got really massive claws like I don't, then you may find you kind of have to curl your fingers around a little bit. Again, no different from the podium paddle module, but it does stick out that two centimeters further than the stock paddles that come with the V2. So just something to be aware of there. And uh, yeah, look, in, otherwise in terms of the shifters, they feel really nice, they function well. Again, I mean, they do feel a lot better than these stock shifters do as we demonstrated before. But I mean, the big question is cosmetics aside, are these magnetic paddle shifters worth an extra 90 euros to you over the V2? Now, I mean, one thing that is hard to look past is the fact that you can purchase or even make yourself, if you have a 3D printer, your own magnetic paddle shifters. And look, they don't feel quite as good as these ones do, but it's very, very, very close. So look, if you're on a tighter budget, I'd say that's probably the better way to go. But look, really, I think what it boils down to here is if you already own a V2 wheel, um, it's probably gonna be a bit of a difficult sell in terms of upgrading. Ultimately, as the name suggests, this is a special edition wheel. It's designed to appeal to people that like to own something a little bit unique. So I think if you're in the market for your first Formula wheel, this is definitely the one that I would pick. If I didn't already own a Formula V2, I would absolutely buy this wheel if I was in the market for one. Would I upgrade to the podium paddle shifter over the top? Probably not. I think I would be perfectly satisfied with the shifters that come with this wheel. And uh, yeah, probably never need to change another thing. As somebody that already owns a Formula V2, would I rush out and buy one of these? Look, I mean, really that comes down to how much I could sell my Formula V2. We're in a really interesting market at the moment where there's really high demand for secondhand goods and there's a good chance that you probably could sell an existing Formula V2 for quite a decent price. And the price difference between this and what you get for that would be quite small at this particular point in time. So yeah, I think if you've been impressed with what we've covered today with this wheel and you can get a decent price secondhand for your V2, absolutely go for it. But look, don't expect anything earth shattering. Don't expect any major differences between the two. Primarily, it is just cosmetic changes that are subjective whether you like them or not. And yeah, other than that, really, it's just down to the magnetic paddle shifters. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you found today's video insightful and useful. If you have, please do hit that thumbs up button. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, if you are looking at buying one of these, I would absolutely love it if you would consider using those affiliate links in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's pretty much what keeps this channel running these days. So I do really appreciate your support there. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching, guys. Leave that thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Make sure you're subbed and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss future videos. We do have a bunch of other exciting hardware reviews coming up over the next couple of weeks as well. So it's a great time to get subscribed. But other than that, uh, yeah, guys, thank you very much. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.